Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. As you've seen in the title, this is a reseller office tour. I'm gonna to show you exactly my setup here. Um, so thank you for watching. If you're new to this channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Jason and I'm a full-time reseller on eBay. I started two and a half years ago. Um, sorry, no. I started three and a half years ago, August of 2016. No. I started four years ago. August 2016, selling part-time for a year and a half on the side with my um, day job. And I built that out for a year and a half until I could go full-time with it. April of 2018, I went full-time and I haven't looked back since. So I've been doing this for two and a half years full-time and having a lot of fun. 99% of the items I sell are clothing and then I have the occasional item that I found that has value that I'll sell as well. And I'm always trying to keep my eye peeled for other items, but because I know clothing so well, I've been able to like niche down into certain brands and quickly and efficiently go and find those brands, list them and sell them. So all that to say, thank you for tuning in and watching. I hope that you'll stick around for the rest of the video where I will go through 20 to 25 items that sold on eBay for the, me this last weekend. But before I get into that, let me just take you on a quick office tour of where I'm working. And I wanna show you exactly what it looks like here in my office. You may be looking for some ideas on how to set yours up and maybe I can give you um, some inspiration just by seeing mine, hopefully, and then I'll show you exactly where my inventory is and, and how I store that as well. All right, well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. All right, I can't remember if I've shown you guys this route before, but here's the room I'm operating out of, and as I said just previously, we're gonna be moving soon, but I wanted to document this just to get this on camera so I remember it, but uh, we spent about uh, close to two months here. This is a small room, I'm gonna have a bigger setup when we move, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, you can see nothing fancy on the uh, the way I'm taking photos. I've just got a ring light and um, a box light over here. I've got a hanger hanging right up here. And honestly, no backdrop. I just use eBay's white background tool to take my photos. And then uh, it's kind of a, my wife uses the space too for her Etsy store. She does prints and things. And a quick shout out by the way, because my wife is awesome and her store has some really cool like prints and cards and just different things that um, I think you'll find are really creative. So if you do wanna go to her store, I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can go straight to her store, her Etsy account, and you can kind of browse through her items. And if you feel inclined to make a purchase, thank you for supporting her. I know that she will really appreciate it. Click the link, go follow her store, give her some love, and or favorite her store, give her some love, that would be really great. Sorry if that light is bright, but just uh, camera supplies and things like that. But here's kind of where I mainly work out of. I've got my computer set up, got the dual screen, it just really helps me go a little quicker um, when I'm listing. And then I have all of my shipping supplies over here. I've got all those USPS boxes from a shoe box to varying si various sizes here, regional rate boxes. I've got poly mailers and padded flat rate envelopes got tape and no thank you cards anything that possibly I can need for my business is right here bubble wrap I'm gonna set it up very similarly at the next place I'm gonna have also another shelving unit over here and I'll have I think the bubble wrap across the top so I'm looking forward to setting it up honestly I also have this bench this bench um, just made it from scratch <laughs> A little self promo there, but uh, just made it so that I would have a place where I can put the clothes down. Um, and here's kind of a reseller hack. If you're looking for a way to save a little bit of time, you can see I went ahead and taped a ruler um, up to, let's see, 40 inches. So I can quickly lay the, the clothing items down and measure without having to use this if you want. I use this too, but um, yeah, so we got the scale. This is kind of a multi-use uh, bench that I use for uh, measuring my photos, shipping my items, and it's just been great. So looking forward to my setup when I get to the new place. I'm gonna take you through here and show you kind of my operation in the garage because um, now that we've moved, I used to have a storage unit if you've been, sorry, I don't know if that 
door was really loud. But I used to have a storage unit before in Colorado, which was great because I had twice as much stuff as I do now. But when I moved, I kind of got rid of half my inventory. Um, so I've got, this is all like personal stuff, but it'll eventually be inventory. But I've got all these bins, as you can see here, and they are all labeled. I know I've shown some of you this before, but um, I've got a system here, and you see a lot of resellers do this. They get a bin, they put uh, like an uh, alphabetical, um, what am I trying to say, a letter and then some kind of number. There's many ways to do it, honestly. This isn't maybe not the best way. It's the way that works for me, and maybe, maybe it is a way that could work for you. But there are a lot of ways that resellers, some resellers just do a letter, some do a number, some do a combo. You can do whatever you want, but make it your system. Staying organized is what will keep you efficient, and efficiency is what saves you money. So hopefully that's a, a great tip for you. But each of these, so like this um, K3 right here, as you can see, these are all, you can't see it there, but these are all shoes. And what I do is I put in the custom SKU field in the listing, I put K3, which tells me where to find it, and then I put the date. So if I had listed this today, it would be K3A10 2020. That tells me the location and also how old that item is. So I can get a quick snapshot of, um, you know, if someone sends an offer on an item, I can see how long I've had it if I want to go into the custom SKU field. But yeah, so I've got um, just these also these cheap like uh, what probably $30 for you know that unit right there that you can make either like a tall shelf or have them go out I use these just so when I pull these bins out I can set them here and quickly grab what I need to grab so it helps me not have to set like if you can see I don't know if you can tell but these are 116 quart bins there's kind of a better they're really long and if they're filled, they're heavy. So I, I use these to set them here rather than putting them on the ground and then having to lift them from the ground, which could really hurt my back. So um, I use these quite a bit to grab stuff when I'm grabbing for picking for shipping. So yeah, this is kind of where I am now. Now, obviously this is gonna change a little bit. Here's the other view of um, my garage inventory system but these racks right here you can obviously build something yourself really cheap out of wood but I bought these one of these units um, is so from there here is hundred and fifty dollars to two hundred at Home Depot or Lowe's they fluctuate um, I just bought a lot of them at the beginning and now I have enough to keep my inventory but you can see they can all connect um, I've got another couple of racks here I actually had like eight of these in Colorado and I sold a bunch of them off for pretty much almost what I paid for them so I had used them for a couple of years and then uh, sold them off and made a hundred bucks each on the racks back in Colorado because people are always looking for stuff like this for garage organization so these are great I love these racks these are the husky racks and I don't know if I have a link below in my YouTube channel video description but if I don't, maybe um, I will remember with this note and go and put it in there because, uh, like I said, these are awesome and they hold like several thousand pounds. So um, if you're selling clothing, you probably won't ever get close to that. But yeah, so that's my that's my garage system right here. Probably will have something very similar at the new house. All right, let's go back in and uh, I will... Now that I've kind of explained um, what my <laughs> what my setup looks like, as you can see, it's not far from where I work to the inventory. But uh, yeah, this is my space, and now I want to give you a few items that have sold recently, so that you can see um, so you can see what's selling. And honestly, this weekend was one of the better weekends that I've had in a while. All right, I'm gonna flip this over to my uh, computer here. So if you see me looking up, it's because I've got my monitor right behind. But I'm gonna show you now as I screen share exactly the items that sold this weekend for profit. Now keep in mind also before I do this, keep in mind that 
I'm not gonna say be on the lookout for all these items. Some of these items I sold are old inventory and I'm, I was just glad to get rid of it. So don't think that everything that I sold are things that I would endorse and pick up now. Obviously there's a price for everything. If you can get something really cheap, it may be worth flipping, but some of these brands that I'm gonna show you um, just aren't worth picking up and selling anymore. So I'll, I'll try and explain that as I go through these and I'll try and explain how much I paid for each one just to give you an idea. So you can kind of see the margin. Um, I don't know how many I have, but probably close to 30 items would be my guess. Um, actually, I do know because I just shipped out all my items. I have about, I had I think 20, 25-ish items that I sold this weekend. It was actually a really good weekend, guys. It was hands down far and above, way better than any other weekend I've had in recent months. I had a couple of really good sales on the weekend that were over $100, and that really helped just get this um, large weekend out. So between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I did, let me think, 323, 520, and 170. Let's just call it over $1,000 in sales over the weekend. I had $323 on Friday. I had 500 and close to $520 on Saturday and then I had close to 170 on Sunday. So all in all, excellent weekend. You know, if I were going off of a year ago, I would have said this was a slower weekend, but the way things have been with, you know, the wild, crazy times right now and just uh, people laid off and just everything that's going on, I, I can't be more grateful for $1,000 in sales over these Friday, Saturday, Sunday weekend. So um, let's just go ahead and get into now what, I sold this weekend and I'll start with the most recent items that sold. So first up, as you can see, this was an Orvis. It was brand new with tags, an Orvis, um, like a newsboy hat. And yeah, there's there's the, the tag. I mean, you can see made in the USA. I don't understand why this took so long, but I had on this for 10 to probably 10 months. And I thought when I got it, it would sell really well because Orvis sells well and it was new. But it is a hat that not a lot of people are looking for to buy. So you gotta find that particular buyer. I probably wouldn't pick this up anymore. Um, but I, I did an experiment this weekend. I had several hats that I just thought, like vintage hats, I just thought I would get um, really good money for. And that wasn't the case. And I've been sitting on them for close to a year or more. And finally, I just said, you know what? I'm gonna do 99 cent um, auction, add 390 or add 490, no, three or four bucks. I don't know, whatever it was, shipping on top of that. That way, at least I get $5 out of the deal if I get a bid. And I got uh, most of my hats sold. So they haven't all been paid for, but they all, most of them sold it with the exception of one this morning. And um, yeah, so the next three items that I'm showing you here are all items out of that auction that I just listed to get um, my hats gone. Um, I, I wouldn't say like to avoid buying vintage hats, but just know which ones to look for. So you're looking for really um, older ones, trucker style with like a patch or, um, you know, some really cool um, vintage hats. And obviously I thought these ones that I bought would um, they would go for more than they did and they would sell faster and that's not the case. But this Orvis isn't really a vintage hat, but it was brand new. I picked it up for uh, like seven to eight bucks. I started off at $7.99 on an auction with a $5 shipping fee. Now what you'll notice in my store is, um, kind of going on some tangents here, but um, in my store I do free shipping on everything. But when I'm doing an auction, I always add a shipping charge just so I make sure and cover at least shipping if I only get one bid. I don't do auctions that much, but when I do, <laughs> sounds like a commercial, I don't do auctions that much, but when I do, I always add a shipping charge. So something that you may want to do for your business as well, but as you can see here, this hat, um, I mean, it's a great hat. It was small and medium, maybe why it took longer and not a style that people are looking for as much anymore but it did sell, took, got one bit on it, eight bucks plus five shipping, $13. I pretty much broke even on this hat, but finally got rid of it after almost a year of having it. And as I mentioned, the next two are um, two more hats that sold on offers, or sorry, on auctions. This is a Golden State Warriors um, corduroy hat. 
you can still see like the um, the sticker there on the top. And honestly, with the way you know, if I listed this probably two years ago, I probably would have made more money. But the Warriors are kind of last year or last year this year, whatever you want to say. It hasn't been their year with some injuries and Steph Curry and Thompson out, and then Kevin Durant leaving to go to Brooklyn. So the Warrior, I would say, the Warrior brand has taken quite a hit. There's still a team that a lot of people follow, but. This one just took forever to sell, and this was excellent condition, like new. Um, it was, uh, wasn't was fitted, it was a snapback, but yeah, I got one bid for 99 cents, and I charged $4 shipping, so pretty much broke even on that and uh, sold it this morning. This next one, same story, got one bid, 99 cents. This was a vintage hat that I just thought would get more money, and this was a US soccer um, visor. I think if, the Olympics had taken place this summer like they were supposed to. This may have sold for more money. I, I could have sat on this longer until next summer, but I just didn't want to wait that long. And um, you know, next summer is when they're, they've postponed the Olympics till. And so um, may have gotten more money if the Olympics were going on this summer, but you know what, it's okay. These, so, these ship really cheap um, for under $3 because they're less than four ounces. So I pretty much um, got the shipping to cover the shipping. So $4 shipping plus a dollar. I didn't make anything on this, maybe even lost, but uh, I was tired of looking at these hats. So again, those are the last of the hats, but just remember, very vintage. Look them up if you can. And I will say the one of the largest sales I've ever had was a vintage hat. It was a K Products Yellowstone. It had a patch. Maybe I'll put a picture of it up here somewhere. But it was a K Product Vintage Yellowstone patch hat. I listed it and within an hour sold it for $200. And I only paid a quarter for it at a garage sale. So that was one of the best. Um, sorry about the sneeze. That was. Oh man. That was one of the best um, sales and flips that I've had in my reselling career on one item. All right, next up, this was a recent purchase from a thrift haul probably a week ago. Um, I picked up, let me turn off my phone here. I picked up 40, almost 50 of these travel bags and they were all brand new. And I had seen these in a thrift store before. Um, that's kind of a picture right there of what came in it. It's, uh, they're actually travel bags that they give out on American Airlines in first or business class. So um, I picked up like 47 of these. I had seen these before in a Salvation Army and they were $2 a piece. And I um, decided to pass. I came back around a couple weeks later. They were still there and they actually had like 20 more sitting out. And so I thought, man, maybe I should take an offer or make an offer on these. So I asked the lady and at this store I've, I've negotiated before and they've accepted offers. So I knew I could do it. I said, hey, would you take 50 cents a piece for each one of these? And I looked them up, seen that a few had sold in the past for like $12 each. And she said, uh, so I, you know, 50 of them there, I was willing to pay 50 cents a piece, comes out to about $25. And she said, well, how about I just give them all to you for five bucks? And I was like, all right, I'll take that. And you know, this was something where she's seen these right by the register for so long, she was ready to get rid of them. So I took them all off of her hands. I just sold my first one within a week of listing it. I took a best offer of $11. You can see here, I've got um, discounts if people buy more. So if they buy one, it's $13.31. Obviously they can make an offer, but if they pay full price, $13.31. And if they buy four or more, it's $11.31 a piece. Now, I don't know why anyone would buy more than one. You just need one if you're traveling. You don't need three travel bags. But um, yeah, it was. it's kind of a cheap you know, travel last minute item that you can get. It's got like a face mask, socks, uh, had some lotion, earplugs, things like that. So 10 bucks, you're not gonna get much for these, but you know, I was able to pay three or $4 for shipping. I paid, you know, 10 cents a piece for these and probably made three or four bucks profit on just one of these. So um, I typically don't make a strategy on making three or $4 margin, that's not enough for me. But if I have one listing where I can sell several of them just on a cycle, you know, three or four bucks a pop times 50, um, I've already made back my initial investment. I paid five dollars and I made eleven on this one. So I'm already I've already more than um, made money and I still have forty something to go. You know I see a lot of resellers online who are picking up stuff at Goodwills, thrift stores, yard sales for 
two to three dollars and flipping for like 15. That's not a lot of money that you're making. You know, if you, if you, uh, let's say you take that $15 item, let's say you paid two dollars for it and it costs five or six to ship, you know, and then you take out your eBay and selling fees, you're only looking at like five bucks margin. And I would say for the time that you spent to acquire that item, to look it up, to list it, to take photos, to ship it, five dollars is not a lot and i i will not buy items like that for one i will not i will not buy one item i should say for that little of margin i would say ten dollars is the minimum i want on a single item now the only exception is you know if i've had something for a while and i'm just trying to get rid of it i'll move it for less but when I'm looking to acquire new things like inventory at stores, I do not pick up items that are only going to make a few dollars margin. It's just, it's not enough, it's not enough um, money for my time. And so that last item is the only exception because, um, I, like I said, I created two listings total because there, there's two different colors. So I had two listings. It took me literally five minutes to photo and list. And I had 40 something quantity, uh, 47 different items of those. So, you know, the one listing will create three to five dollars. Yeah, probably five bucks every time it sells. And I can do that 47 times and only list it once. So that's the only time I would suggest picking up an item to make less profit than you, than you usually would on other items. So I hope that that makes sense. If not, leave me a comment and let me know and, and maybe, you know, um, I can help clarify for you in the comments. Uh, but moving on to the next item, this was a, a pair of road bike cycling shoes. The, these were women's. Um, Shimano is a great brand. This was an older style, but Shimano, actually I said road bike, but they're mountain bike shoes. And um, you can see there's the bottom soles. You always want to include this specifically with cycling. Um, and let me show you, see if it'll make it larger. Okay, so you can see on the bottom of these cycling shoes that on each shoe there are two bolts. Now, I don't know if you see this, but I listed two bolts up on the title and then there is a um, cleat compatibility two bolt. People need to know this when they're cycling, whether it's two bolt, three bolt, or four bolt. Now the most common I would say for road bike are three bolt, and for mountain bike are two bolt. That's kind of how you can distinguish sometimes shoes, but that's not always the case. Um, you know, when I was cycling, I had mountain bike cleats or clips on my road bike shoes. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's kind of a general idea. And I haven't really found any with four bolts, even though there is a um, item specific field for that. So you want to list that in the title because this is compatible with the type of pedal that the biker has. And they wanna know that. So I always list two or three bolt. I always show a picture. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that helps you out with the cycling shoes. Um, with shoes, I take, I take like a 360 degree angle. So you can see different sides, front, back, both sides, and then top or the insides and then the bottom. That's kind of how I do it. Um, but uh, sorry, I'm rambling now. I took a best offer. No, this one sold for full price of $40.31. And uh, yeah, sent that out. All right, this next item is an old item. I wouldn't advise buying it. Uh, I used to buy these all the time. Western shirts, Wrangler, Eli Cattleman. Um, and I'm sitting on quite a bit of them. I've sold a few off, but they just don't go for much. And you, you may think that I got 1601 for this, but I actually took a best offer of 12. This was a pearl snap shirt, Eli Cattleman. I would only buy this if I could find it for um, new with tags, and then I would sell it for like 20 bucks, 25. But uh, this is an old, old shirt. You can see it's worn, worn tag. Um, there's what the tag looks like, but like I said, I wouldn't make a strategy on picking up these Western shirts. I got $12 for this, probably ended up making a total of five to $6 profit. This next item, another item I wouldn't necessarily pick up. Um, but this was a get out of the inventory item as well. This was a Brazil uh, soccer jersey. Now, if you can find like the Nike or Adidas, like more of the official jerseys, then maybe consider those. I would definitely pick up those for like popular teams, but this was just an off-brand, 
you know, it had Brazil on the back. And I thought, you know, I know there's a, a following for Brazil soccer. Um, it's not as strong as it used to be, but I just thought it would sell. It had the patch on the front and it just didn't. So I sat on this for more than a year and I took a best offer of $15 on this. All right, this item actually I just listed last week and uh, took a um, best offer on this within a week of listing it. And this is a vintage LL Bean, um, like looks like a flannel, um, but it's just a button down shirt. And there's the tag LL Bean, um, great color. This is more of a color that will sell in like fall and winter, the, this blue and green, or if you find like a red plaid, um, but I took a best offer of $28 and typically for something like this, that's the low end. I'm looking at 27 to 28 and then all the way up to 35 to 40, depending on how new or excellent condition it is. This wasn't like excellent, excellent. It was great, but as in great meaning like no flaws, um, but it had been worn and you could see that, but it's an awesome shirt, 28 bucks. And I paid $4 for it. So uh, four and a 28, seven times my money, probably made $15 profit after you take out the fees and the shipping expenses. So that's a great flip, great margin, low investment, $4, flipped it quickly and got good money for it. This is the find of the video, guys. I should save this one for last because um, obviously this sold for the most money, but I'm going in order of when these sold. Um, so. I, you probably saw, if you've watched my videos, you've seen a video where I picked up this um, at a thrift haul with my dad, and I paid $30 for this Harley Davidson uh, leather vest, thinking that it was like half price. I got to the register and they were like, it's not half price. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take a chance on it. I had looked up some comps and there, right away there were comps that sold for 70, 80, 90, somewhere in that range. But this was a 3XL, which is great. Large sizes, I have said this over and over, pick up large sizes. Um, and especially with Harley Davidson, the larger the better. So I picked this up and I got home and I'm thinking, okay, I'll list it for just under 100, take a best offer in the 70, 80, 90 range, and then I'll make 30 or $40 profit. But I did more research because of the item that I had and I knew Harley Davidson has a great following so I did some more research and I saw several vests going for closer to 200. Now there's nothing um, unique about this. I mean, it's a great vest, but as you can see, um, just solid black vest with like the shiny silver snaps, nothing on the back. Um, it didn't have a Harley Davidson patch like the big Eagle or it didn't have the Harley Davidson logo. It was just a plain um, back. And so nothing on it. If I had had a patch, I would have gotten more money. So if you can find one with like a flame, a skull, a Harley Davidson logo, something that has Harley on it, or the Eagle that they're kind of notorious for, it sells for more money. But even without all of that stuff, I still got the full price of 179.81. So I listed it three weeks ago, I got $180. My profit on this was probably 130 to 40. Um, I paid maybe maybe a little less. I paid 30 for the vest. I paid $12 for shipping. I probably paid 10 bucks, um, well, probably 15 bucks in fees. And then um, I don't remember if this sold promoted listing. So I made at least $100 profit on this, is easy to say, maybe a little more than that, on a great Harley Davidson motorcycle vest. All right, next up. I sold this Foot Joy uh, golf jacket and it's short sleeve, um, had some kind of like, I don't know, I mean that looks like the San Francisco Giants logo, but I don't know if it's that exactly or if it's for a, a country club. Um, but with Foot Joy, what you wanna find is, you wanna see it say on the inside of the tag Dry Joys, or sometimes it says it like right on the sleeve, it'll say Dry, so Foot Joy Dry Joys and that means it's waterproof. So this wasn't Dry Joys, but this is a newer style of Foot Joy jacket. It's like a athletic windbreaker for golf that people can, you know, golfers can throw on real quick if it gets windy. Um, Foot Joy has a great following, excellent Foot Joy stuff, like in excellent condition, sells well. Um, and this sold for the full price of $34.01. So um, very happy with the sale, it went first class. And uh, 
Actually, you know what? I think I sold this on a best offer. Yeah, my mistake. I sold that on a best offer of $28, but still, this was a great jack in excellent condition. And I actually have another FootJoy item. I'll show you uh, one of the last items that sold for a lot more money. So um, FootJoy for the win. This next item up, I, um, I've i sold quite a few of these Patagonia Sanchillas. This is a vest, it's like a fleece vest. And um, there's the tag. And as you can see next to the tag, I missed this in the store, but I still would have picked it up anyways because I paid I think eight bucks for this and there was a hole on the hem. I listed this and it sold with less than a week of listing, I think within three days. Um, if you can find, you can't really see it in that picture, but the Patagonia, right under the Pat Patagonia, it'll say Senchilla, S-Y-N-C-H-I-L-L-A. That product line goes for more money than just the standard Patagonia. It has a cult following, especially among like um, college students, high school students, People love the Patagonia Sanchillas. If you can find, not necessarily the vest as much, even though this went for great money, um, but if you can find like the pullover fleece sweater that have long sleeves and have the little like color uh, pocket on the front with the snap, it's called Patagonia Sanchilla Snap Tee Fleece. Those sell for more than 50 every time, as long as they're in great condition. This one, um, I would have gotten probably 50 to 60 on this vest, but with that hole, um, I took a best offer of 40, so, or no, not 40, 34. Took a best offer of 34. I didn't really try and counter this just because it had a hole and I knew I could lose them if I didn't accept. Um, I thought that was a great price and this is light enough, it's gonna go first class. So I flipped this item from like eight bucks into 34. This next item is another item that I don't pick up anymore um, because I sat on this for a long time, but this is an Oakley button up shirt and uh you know beautiful colors it may have been it was a large so not a bad size but um honestly it just i sat on it for so long i think it was a year and a half that i had this shirt just not no bites at all um no offers so finally a great offer came along and i took it i believe i sold this for 19 dollars. you can see i had this listed for 26.81 typically Anything less than 20, I would counter in the 20 to 22 range, but because it was so old, I just had to say, you know what, I don't wanna lose this offer. $19 is a great offer, and I need to get this item out, get this old listing gone, and ship this shirt, so I took it. This next item up, I paid $21 for at a thrift store here a couple weeks ago. This brand, I cannot keep in my store. It is hot, I mean, it just, it sells within months and usually within months, but these sold within um, a week or two of a listing. And that's pretty common for affliction. Um, you know, if you if you get affliction items and you price them right, you're not gonna be sitting on it for three, four, five months. You're gonna sell you're gonna sell it within a month or two of listing it. And this, like I said, within a week, there I'll show you the tag. There's the tag right there on the back. Um, the American flag with affliction. This pocket design right here, I'm not sure what you'd call that, but um, that's kind of their standard men's pocket, um, back jeans pocket design that, that sell really well. And this was an, a very unique pattern, the acid wash jeans, kind of a distressed look on the front. And you can tell that those were the modifiers that I used in the description and title of this item and even using um ebay's white photo editor you can see you know the edges aren't crisp there but this still sold fast um i took a best offer of 60 dollars within um, a week or two of listing this i paid 21 for it so i probably made a total of 20 dollars profit by the time you subtract out all my fees <clears throat> so guys remember that anytime you see affliction pick them up don't pay more than $20, I would say, for jeans. Um, the t-shirts, I, I picked up probably eight to 10 t-shirts at one point at a garage sale for a dollar a piece, $2 a piece, something like that. Slowly sold those for like 15 to 20. Those are great too, but the jeans are, men's jeans are where the, the demand is really at. <clears throat> All right, next up, this item I had for a long time. I paid a dollar at a garage sale. This is a, um, a women's, Tommy Hilfiger patch, um, like hoodie. 
I say hoodie, it was a full zip, but it had the hood, and I guess it's still a hoodie, but it had the patches on the sleeve and on the front, and I just thought, man, this would go for more money and faster than it did. I had this listed for $22.31, and someone came along and made a best offer of $18, and I accepted it. So it went in a first class, uh, not first class, a padded flat rate envelope for $7.52, probably made um, 10 bucks profit because I only had a dollar in it. But um, yeah, I won't buy these anymore. I'm not suggesting that you do either unless, unless you just pay a dollar for it and list it at 20 bucks. Um, you know, I probably had this for 30 and slowly lowered it over time, but didn't get a lot of hits on it. And Tommy Hilfiger is very saturated in the market. Um, so this is a, that's just an item that probably won't pick up again. Next up, pair of Volcom True to This shorts men's size 34 these were used and Volcom is like a skateboard brand um, so most of the time I, I didn't have the space for this but usually I would put like skateboard shorts or something in the title these are excellent condition size 34 they're a polyester cotton blend and uh, there's the tag for Volcom that's kind of the newer tag style um, I took a best offer of $20 had these listed for 2501 and sat on these for a while so glad to see these go as well I'd say pick those up if you can get new with tags, but those, um, you know, TJ Maxx and Marshalls has a lot of those brand new for 20 bucks or less, $15. So the market on those is really low, especially when you can get brand new for under 20 bucks. Um, I'm kind of surprised they sold for 20 used, but I'll take that and I won't probably pick those up anymore unless I can get a really good deal on a, on a new pair. This next item up was a pair of Columbia, um, Outdoor pants, I don't typically pick these up. I've halted pretty much all Columbia's just because it's a mainstream brand, has a lot of uh, supply out there. But these I paid $4 for and I figured I'm just gonna price these low so I can flip them quick. Um, with the tail end of summer coming up and moving into fall, people are gonna be looking for like outdoor pants um, as opposed to like wearing shorts. And uh, these were a smaller size, but they still sold well. $26.81 is what I had them for. I got an offer of like $18. I countered with $22 and they took it. So $22 out of a $4 investment, that gives me a profit of about 10 bucks. These were lightweight, shipped first class. And uh, yeah, happy with that. I, I was happy with that because I knew that one, I only spent $4, so I didn't spend eight to $10. And so low investment, but also I, I sold those, I priced them to sell them quick and they went. Uh, item up that I, this item that I bought was mainly because it was new with tags. You can see the tag right there and this brand is Roper. Roper is a Western brand that I typically don't buy the used clothing for unless it is a very vintage, awesome design, great color shirt. So with Roper, and, and maybe you've had some different luck with Roper if you've tried your luck there. I've bought a few things and it just takes a while to sell. And same story with this one. Took a while, this was brand new with tags. I had it priced at $35.81. And I believe this sold full price. No, took a best offer of $30 on this. It was a denim shirt, XL, great size. I just, I thought it would sell faster this than this. It didn't. I'm definitely happy with $30. I'll take that on a new shirt, but just took a while. So I probably paid, you know, uh, five to eight bucks to pick up the shirt at the thrift store and to get 30 is great, but I didn't want to wait as long as I did to get that much money. All right, this is a new item that I, I would pick up again. I don't pick up Abercrombie and Fitch uh, just because just like American Eagle, Old Navy, um, Aeropos, Aeropostel, Aeropostel, Post, okay, I can't say, I've never been able to say that one, Aeropostel. <laughs> maybe um, all those brands are saturated in the market the only reason why I picked this up is it was a heavy cotton flannel and people will pay more if it's heavy in winter uh, for winter items and this was almost it didn't even look like it had been worn so it didn't have the tags but it was I knew I could list it excellent condition like new and I listed it last week it sold within two days of listing it I had it for $34.01 took a best offer of $30 so something like that, I, I'm making sure to price it to move it fast. And so happy with that $30 purchase. I only paid $4 for that shirt. And sorry, I said happy with that $30 purchase. I meant happy with that $30 sale on a $4 investment. At the same place that I got that Abercrombie and Fitch cotton flannel, I picked up this Peter Millar um, polo golf shirt. Now, 
I, I think in my last video, I talked about Peter Millar. Here is their tag. Let's see if I can get it to zoom in. There it is. And I suggested, I think I had a pair of shorts and I said, if you're looking for Peter Millar, make sure you get that it says on the tag, summer comfort. If it just says Peter Millar, it's vintage and not the great vintage, it's just old. But with with especially golf polos, you you want the summer comfort. And that just means like a moisture wicking, very light shirt that pulls the sweat away from the golfer. So Peter Millar is a golf brand. Summer Comfort, this is 2XL, great size, great shirt, great color design. I mean, you can see this like geometric pattern, um, but here is the beauty with golf clubs. And this is hard to know if you, if you just don't know golf, but I happen to know golf, even though I'm long haired, don't care. I, I still grew up golfing. I still like to golf occasionally. And I know golf brands. I know golf courses. I know tournaments. Just watched the PGA Championship this last week. Um, and so I know that the course on this, Southern Hills, is a course where they play, have played and probably will in the future some championship golf rounds and tournaments there. So if you can get the right um, golf course logo on the shirt, it will sell really well. I had this listed for 5381. I had this guy sending offers of 30, 35. Ideally at 40 was my, my, the lowest I wanted to take on this because of the color and the logo. And he did accept an offer of $40, so I sold that within, it was, the, it was the same as the Abercrombie cotton flannel. I listed it in that same lot last week, sold it within two or three days of listing it for 40 bucks. This was another shirt that I paid $4 for, so 10 times my money on a $40 sale. If you take out the four, four for shipping, probably 10 to $12 total fees to sell, I made a profit of 25 to $30 on this shirt and within two days of listing it. So that's an excellent uh, return on investment. Um, I will say if you're, if you're trying to figure out um, the golf course or the logo that's on the shirt, just put that in the, the comp when you go to look it up. So if, if I, you know, actually I, I did do this. I don't think there were any recent comps for that exact golf course, but some golf courses that are well known are Beth Page Black or just Beth Page in general. Um, Augusta is where the Masters is played. You've got like, if it says TPC on it, that's a, that's a, like a turn, the Players Championship golf course. So if it says TPC and then has any course, pick it up. You know, there's some Pebble Beach is a good one. Yeah, if you get one that's just like a local golf course, no one really cares about that as much, but you want one that the pros play on. So I think I've hit that one really well with the details. I'll move on to the next now. All right, got uh, three left. Let me see here. Yeah, three left. And this brand is, I'll, I'll tell you a story about this one because Fayette Chill. So we're gonna be buying our house in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The University of Arkansas is in Fayetteville, and there was a college student, a business student that had a project, and for his business project, he created this brand, Fayette Chill, probably eight to 10 years ago, and I thought it was kind of just a joke, but it actually, it's, it's, um, it's based on like, uh, like an outdoor image. The brand is more like an outdoorsman type, um, brand, I guess. And so, um, yeah, I knew of Fayette Chill and really it just meant something to me because I lived in Fayetteville, but in Colorado, I actually found a store that was selling this brand brand new. And I was like, whoa, they reach all the way here in Colorado. And I looked them up and they were in several states. So this brand has grown. Um, this, I'd say this guy is doing really well on his project. Uh, eight to 10 years later, but this was a shirt I picked up here for two or three bucks. Um, it's got a really cool graphic on the back. Fayette Chill Mountain Company, I'd say, you know, long sleeve shirts with graphics are kind of what they're known for, but they're also making like the outdoor button ups and shorts and pants and things like that. On the front, it has this cool logo. Um, I actually had two of these. One of them had a tiny hole in the armpit and I got confused when I was um, thinking about this offer. I had this for $26.81. He made an offer for $17 and I took it thinking this was the one with the hole. I should have looked at that because this one wasn't the one with the hole. I was really hoping to get $20, but $17 is only three off. And again, sold this within a few days of listing it. Listed this last week. So 
If you just by chance come across a Fayette uh, Chill shirt or any kind of clothing, pick it up because there are people out there that are looking for this brand. And if you want to buy another shirt, I have a 2XL in my store right now. Um, last two, this was an item that took a while to sell mainly because of the size. It was um, a pair of Brooks Addiction Walker shoes. So just more comfort, size 15. Um, I picked these up for probably eight to $10 at a thrift store, a Goodwill, and got home and realized, I mean, I kind of saw this in the store, but when you don't have a box, you don't know if it's excellent condition or if it's new. And I looked at these really carefully because I don't want to list something as new if it's used excellent condition. Um, and realized there was no wear on these. The soles didn't have any signs of wear, so I listed them as new. Uh, I will say, if you're like me and you're a buyer on eBay as well, there are a lot of people selling things um, new that are really used excellent condition and it's kind of frustrating i've even started reaching out to people before i make offers or just purchase and say hey is this really new without tags as in never been worn or is this used excellent condition because there is a difference and some people are really loose and um, liberal i guess with their uh, description when they're, they're listing it as new without tags or new without box and it's not really new and so I try and be really careful in particular with that when I'm selling I don't want the person to get it and go these aren't new this is used I would rather them get it and go wow these are used and they look new so this is the rare time when I listed a pair of shoes um, new because I examined the soles and saw there wasn't any signs of wear and so um, had these for a while a few months they were size 15 but I had them for 80 81 and the guy made an offer for $70 he originally reached out for 60 I went to 70 he counted at 65 I stayed at 70 and he accepted 70 so Great sale, $70, pair of shoes from 10 bucks to 70, great flip. And my last item, I told you I would have uh, another FootJoy item and this is the kind that you wanna definitely pick up. I'll show you the tag right there, FootJoy Dry Joys. Now this is an old jacket, this is not a new style, but it is 2XL and let's see if I can get it to zoom in. It is 2XL, there's the Dry Joys, that's an old logo. Um, but because this brand is well known and very sought after, I could still get a really great price on this. Again, listed this last week. I feel like there's a theme here for $44.81 and it sold for full price, $44.81. And it's short sleeve, it's got the FootJoy logo on the back there. This is one of the rare occurrences where it had, man, what am I doing? Where it had a golf logo on the chest. So. Although High V Classic isn't a stellar tournament that I know of, <laughs> um, it's still sold for great money. So I'd say jackets are different than shirts. Um, you know, if this didn't have that logo on there, maybe could have gotten another five dollars. But forty-five dollars for a used jacket that I paid four dollars for is excellent. So I'm very happy with that sale. And. Um, yeah, 10 times my money. You've now seen a lot of, a handful of items that I would say don't pick up. Uh, this was my mistake. <laughs> I don't do this anymore. Happy to get it out of my store. And there are a handful of items equally that I listed a week or two ago and they sold for great money. So that is what you want. So cling to the second, not the first. Cling to those items that are gonna come in for great money, return really fast money, and get you 10, to 30 40 dollars and up so um, that's how reselling works and that's how you take your business from kind of on the beginner stage to moving into more of an experienced um, reseller where you're um, where you're looking for items that sell for higher amounts yeah so hopefully that helps you um, kind of strategize um, some ideas for goals in your business and how to really make money doing this so that if you want to, you can go full time if you're not already. All right. Well, that's going to be it for today. Um, I just want to thank you for watching and joining me on this one. 
Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this video. I will say that in the description of this video, I have different items that I use in my store. So as I was showing you earlier um, around my office and all the supplies that I use, um, you can find all of those items there. You can click it, it goes to Amazon, it shows you exactly what I use. So you can purchase too if you're looking for like say a scale or even those Husky shelves that I mentioned before. And I'll leave you with this. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for me. I really appreciate it. So thanks so much for tuning in and have a great week. Happy selling. We'll catch you later guys. Bye.